welcome to Melias the Story Collector Web TV, where each week we bring you inspiring stories from courageous individuals about the moments and experiences that have shaped their lives. In this episode, we're talking with the gorgeous Jill, and we're going deep to talk about how the courage to truly be yourself is the most courageous act of all. For the longest time, I felt that things were my fault, that if things didn't go right in my life, it was something that I had done. And if people were mean to me, you know, uh, that it was something that I had had provoked them to do. And recently I've realised it's almost like I've, I've been let off the hook because I've just come to understand that w the way people act, the things that they say and do, are actually nothing to do with me and even their opinions of me are nothing to do with me and when somebody is being unkind it's because of stuff that's happened to them in the past or their thoughts or whatever's going on for them in that time and so I have been brought to tears so many times over the past I guess it's been six months now by the way people have been showing up and the kindness and the generosity uh, and, and just awareness and knowledge that people who are coming into my life have had. Um, and I think that, and you know, you and I have known each other a few years now, I think that I had to go through so many things to learn that life doesn't have to be a struggle. Life doesn't have to be hard. Um, and so what I hope by sharing some of the stories of things that have happened, is that other people who may be in it right now, you know, sort of wading through the mud, please know that it does, it does get better and that you can get through this and, and you've totally got this and that things change really quickly. And from yesterday to today, you can be in a whole different place, literally, but also, you know, in your mind. Wow, wow. Oh, I can't wait to get into this. <laughs> so where did all these start for you? Where did all these stories start and that that feeling of self-doubt within you. Yeah. Well, I think probably all my life I had a feeling of not belonging, um, being a bit different, a bit weird, a bit quirky. <laughs> um, I used to, um, you know, sing and dance and, you know, commercials and songs on the radio and stuff. And I remember walking home from school one day and I was singing at the top of my lungs going down the street and then somebody popped their head up. They were weeding, weeding the garden behind the fence. <laughs> they just smiled at me and being mortified that this person had heard me sing because I was in my own little world. I was probably only about six years old. But then realising that, um, you know, people may be laughing at me because I was quite a quirky child, still am. And uh, so it's I kept... part of your charm. <laughs> <laughs> Kept it very quiet and um, I, I talk about going into the cave and so tried to be normal, tried to fit in and uh, become more mainstream when really, you know, I, I was happiest having tea parties with the fairies at the bottom of the garden and making mud pies and I really did, I, I, I used to say hello to everyone and this is a joke in the family as well, mum had a seat on the back of the bike and we only had one car and I would go around, um, you know, because all of my family lived within cycling distance. So I'd go around to Annie's or Granny's or Nana's on the back of the bike. And I'd say, hello, hello to every, every single person that we'd see. And that was a really uh, big part of who I was. And I think that as I got older, I learned that that's, you know, not, not what people do. They, they don't um, step out of their comfort zone so frequently. So, yeah, I went into the cave and I became... Uh, normal and and somewhat uh, less vulnerable less um, you know out there yeah so it's been a big journey to then uh, step out of the cave mm, how did how did you get to that point where you stepped out of it because that's a big thing I tiptoed <laughs> I tiptoed um, and it's meeting 
amazing people and being inspired by women who aren't afraid like you to step in front of a camera or in front of a group of people. And, and for me, the biggest uh, critics were other women. Mm. They were yeah. the ones that would, you know, point and laugh and, and, you know, behind my back and tear me down. Um, and so for many years, it felt much safer just to stay small and obedient and silent. Um, and am I allowed to swear, Melly? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just thought, fuck that. I've got things to say. And yeah. I really want to meet people. I really want to get to know interesting people. And I really want to tell the people who are inspiring me that they're inspiring me and that I love them. And so that's what I started doing. And yeah. <laughs> it has been a really long journey because what I would do would be putting people on pedestals and saying, oh, you're so great, you're so this and that. But the thing is, you know, and this is we're saying that blowing someone else's candle out doesn't make yours burn brighter, but both candles can burn brightly. Yes. You don't yes. have to make yourself small to make somebody else feel bigger. I love it. I love talking to you. I always get so inspired. <laughs> so well, I think it's really simple. So what happened next then? So you've cut, you're tiptoeing out. You're starting <laughs> to talk to people again. Yep. What, what came next? Well, there was a couple of things that were happening all sort of simultaneously. Um, so this is six years ago. I was new in the country. I had moved to Australia from America um, and newly married uh, and pregnant. And um, I thought, I know that after I have babies, I, I have a tendency to, to withdraw and, you know, sit on the couch and eat chips. And I thought, that's not going to serve me or the rest of the family. So I really need to put myself out there. And so I started uh, a red tent and um, facilitating women's circles, which was really scary because, you know, who was I to do these kinds of things when there was probably people that knew so much more and I wasn't from here. Um, so I started doing that and really I just kept going. I didn't stop. And I think consistency is key. And I am fairly um, methodical in my behaviours and patterns. And so just not quitting. And even though, and I've spoken to you this about this before, that little voice inside my head was saying, you know, who do you think you are? I just said, no, I'm just going to keep doing this. Just going to keep showing up. Just going to keep being me. Um, and hopefully people will like it. And if they don't, I still get to go and do this fun thing. And so, yeah, that was six years ago and more, it's, it's, it has been tiptoeing. And so now I'm fully out of the cave now. I'm, I'm out there. <laughs> I'm making the videos. I'm, um, you know, speaking in front of large groups of people. In fact, I'm, I'm doing it regularly. Uh, and I think practice is definitely the key to getting more confident um, and also not, um, not dwelling on the, the little things, you know, because if we're striving for perfection, it just eliminates all creativity. It stops, it stops it in its track. It eliminates fun. If you're trying to be perfect, there's no fun. There's no spontaneity. And so uh, actually not thinking too much about something when somebody asks me to do something, you know, speak in an event or be a presenter or, you know, whatever. I just, I say yes. And I figure out the details later. Just make it happen. I love it. I love it. That perfectionism is kind of something we've put on as being an adult. You need to be perfect. But really that inner child in us then gets squashed and doesn't get to play. Absolutely. And we learn, we learn if we, if we show up and things don't go as planned or aren't as great as we hoped, you know, those, those expectations will just kick us in the butt every time. So if we actually just show up with, you know, that wholeheartedness, the openness, um, the vulnerability and have fun with it, then that is going to be far more attractive. And I don't, I mean, like it will attract what we want than uh, having the, perfect things to say and the look and the, you know, whatever, you know, that's, it's just this. You become magnetic then. Yeah. And, and the thing about people who are, you know, you know, practiced and practice and practice. Yes, yes, yes. We've got to get better. But if you're just reading it from a piece of paper or, you know, you've got all your facts and you've got your spreadsheets and everything like that, 
for me at least, that's there's no interaction there. There's no connection. There's no um, authenticity. Yes, that's the key word, isn't it? Authenticity. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So where did courage come into your journey then? Like, what does courage mean to you after all this has happened? Well, unfortunately, I had to uh, get knocked down quite a few times. Uh, and it wasn't fun. And it wasn't easy. And I took a lot of, it was, you know, a lot of criticism. And I, I know other people that have sort of been in the same position as me. And so what I, what I did after facilitating this red tent for so long is we set it up as a non-profit. Um, and it has grown and everything, but to start a non-profit organization as a mum of, you know, six kids, <laughs> not really knowing what I was doing, I had to make a lot of mistakes. And it, and it um, we came under quite a lot of criticism from people who were expecting us to know everything, do everything and be everything. And, and it's, a, it's a real give and take relationship when you're in a, a role as a volunteer and especially as a non-profit that you can't be everything or give everything or do everything. Um, and so getting knocked down several times and receiving a lot of criticism from people who probably had never been in the situation that I was in, um, made me then take a few steps outside of myself and go, actually, you're doing the best you can with the knowledge that you have in the, in the time that you're in right now. And every day you're learning more and you're starting to become more courageous. So even though I got knocked down, you know, I got back up like this song and I just kept going. And, and I think one of the times I spoke to you was like, I couldn't believe how many amazing people were just coming on board out of the woodwork, out of the blue. And it was because I had stopped trying to be perfect. And I know now that courage comes from actually recognizing that I can only do so much. There's, there's asking for help, even though it sometimes is uncomfortable. It's so, uh, it's a necessity because honestly, I've seen so many people burn out and there's, there's no courage in that. Giving to myself first, making sure that I can fulfill my needs and then the things that I don't necessarily want to do or I'm not good at, asking for help. Asking for help and letting people and it's the acceptance and, and um, allowing help. That is, is really courageous. Yes, allowing the receiving of others' help. That's a huge courageous yeah. act. I think women today, you know, especially if we're mothers, we put everybody else first. And I really want to turn that tide because I come, I mean, I come from a long line of martyrs and, you know, women who have come before us in generations, they have strived so hard to achieve what we have now got, you know, and the freedom that we, we enjoy um, but at what cost? So today, you know, so many women are trying to do everything and, you know, work full time and raise kids and volunteer and do all these things. And I think that something's got to give. We have to actually allow and accept help. And, you know, we used to have a village. We used to have a whole tribe of women that if you uh, didn't want to cook, but you'd rather, you know, weed the garden, that you would weed the garden um, and somebody else would do the cooking and somebody else would play with the children. And we weren't in our houses isolated. And, you know, it's my goal to see that come back and what a different world it would be. And we would not have the pressure that we put on ourselves so much because human beings are not meant to compete you know i'm going to go across the finish line with all of the food and the water and everything no if we all help each other out and let go of the competition then we're going to be a lot happier as a species <laughs> <laughs>